After the fall of the great elven city Arlathan and the Empire of Elvenon, they were plundered by the Tevinter Imperium, which followed subsequent generations of slavery. They sought to recreate their culture in the Dales, but after three centuries, the Dales collapsed into one of the Chantry's exalted marches. The Elves of Dragon Age are one of the most detailed and lore-expanding races out there. No, truly, everything in Thetis eventually comes from Elven culture, apparently. Even so, many fans may be unaware of the little secrets and mysteries kept by this race. So here are five things they never told you about Elves. Elves created the joining. Well, mainly the knowledge. After the Veil was established, Elves are claimed to have noticed a shortening in their lifetime which ended their immortality and scared them away from human contact. As a result, the elves of ancient Arlathan either fled into hiding with the arrival of the humans and negative 3100 ancient, or were slaves for generations in the Tevinter Imperium. When the first blight hit in negative 395 ancient, it lasted more than 100 years. Many thought it was the end of the days. Entire generations lived and died warring with the Darkspawn, as it spread across most of the regions in Thetis. When the blight was at its most bleak, the Grey Wardens were finally born. The Order was founded at Fortress Weishaupt in the Anderfels. And according to the Dragon Age tabletop RPG, elven slaves were among the few who flocked into the young order of Grey Wardens during the seemingly endless First Blight. The nascent Grey Wardens experimented in secret, in addition to learning from Donark practices and Tevinter blood mages. They studied lore from ancient Arlathan. This knowledge was conveyed by elven slaves who provided it among the condition that the Grey Wardens would hold elves equal to the other races among their ranks, and turn their efforts to elven liberation once the Blight was defeated. And the joining ritual could have been worse during this age, since history fails to record that their victory was due, in part, to their enemies' confusion. The Darkspawn had a difficult time distinguishing the freshly joined Grey Wardens from their own kind. Broken Cultures Unfortunately, the Dragon Age Elves are infamous for their fractured civilizations. Whether people follow traditions half-heartedly or cling to things that were viewed negatively in ancient times, their civilizations have evolved dramatically throughout the ages. Elven, sometimes known as Ancient Elves, were a race of elegant, ethereal immortals who lived in peace with nature. They lived in a world without the veil and saw the fade as natural, similar to the sky. Magic, which was intrinsically linked to their civilization, was now fractured and lost when the veil was established. This was also the cause of their past becoming forgotten. The main culture that we know that tries to tie back their roots is of the Dalish. The Dalish elves attempt to recover, inherit, and protect the two destroyed kingdoms, which are the Dales and Arlathan's wisdom and precious artifacts. As a mean of survival, they lived nomadic existence roaming across Thetis and, of course, trying to avoid humans. However, the Dalish do their best but end up bargaining with spirits and demons for lost knowledge and in turn, making their camps into curses and even abominations. According to Solus and Felison of the Mast Empire, both of whom are considered ancient elves, Dalish legends and lore of their ancient culture are only half true. According to what we know about the alienages, the elven civilization was established amid the inner human cities. They admire the Dalish for being honorable and finding their old paths and cling on to the ancient tree, the Venadol, a tree that surrounds the alienages as a way to adhere to their culture as an elf, although many elves forget about this importance and it's now worthless to many in their day. Keeping the Venadol is just a habit now. Many cities have let theirs wither and die, then chop them up for firewood, no great loss. Nonetheless, there are several elements to blame for the elves' broken culture, including the previously mentioned Veil and the continuous ages of domination and enslavement. Evaneris Dilemma with their involvement with Solus to Mithal, I have little doubt that the Evaneris are behind many things in Thetis, including the Veil and maybe the birth of the Blights. The Elves indeed are responsible for many things in Thetis, but the Evaneris are not who we believe they are. According to the Trespasser DLC from Dragon Age Inquisition, the Evaneris, the gods of the Elven Pantheon, are just as mortal as slaves and can be therefore be killed. Fenharel was one of the gods that battled alongside the emancipated slaves against them. Many fans are perplexed and kind of intimidated by the lore because there are nine gods of the elven pantheon and needless to say there are the forgotten ones that thrive in the abyss or void. 
To summarize easily, according to Dalish legend, the two paternity gods are Elgernon and Mithal. The remainder are listed below them. Originally, in ancient times, there were seven gods, and two of them were emitted to the pantheon as praise gods. Those two are known as Fenharel and Gilanon. Fenharel is the rebel god. Harel or Harelin translates to rebel, who release the elven slaves from the elven nearest and deceive them and the forgotten ones into building a weapon that would end their ceaseless warfare against each other. He imprisoned them both in their respective realms, the elven nearest into the heavens and the forgotten ones into the depths of the abyss. Gilanon created monsters and beasts to be feared and even revered. With her involvement and perhaps a relationship with Andrul, her talent in making these animals made her an acclaimed and respected part of the Evaneris. But despite their wisdom, the elven pantheon was infamous for its greed and brutality towards one another. And things became so terrible that the pantheon's elven mother, Mithal, was slaughtered by her own kind, the Evaneris. Falandin and Andrul are one of the most theorized culprits that plotted her death, and with Flemeth's knowledge and treachery of her lovers, Elgernon could also become engaged as well. And from what we know of the Evaneris, which is still pretty little, we may deduce that they were not good gods. And and Mithal and Fenharel are surely not morally faultless either. However, the next following section may clarify their overall nature. Ancient Elves are spirits. The first of them could be. As stated by Solus, the elves of ancient times inhabited where the Fade and the Waking World were once one. Magic was as basic as breathing. Proven by the Virdathara and Trespasser, spirits are intrinsically linked to their civilization. According to the Chant of Light, spirits are the Maker's first children. They could create and primarily occupy the Golden City, however the Maker was not satisfied and therefore casted them out of the city to create life. Of course, that is one tale Dragon Age likes to tell, but spirits as we know can be created from living beings for a sole purpose, such as faith, wisdom, or even anger and pride. The best link to Elven being considered as spirits is Elgernon's name translation. Elgernon is the father of the Elven pantheon and the god of vengeance. Elger, translated from Elven, means spirit. Non, translated from Elven, means revenge or vengeance. So his name could be translated to the means of spirit of revenge or vengeance. And because Elgernon is known as the god of vengeance, it is possible that the first elves were only spirits who eventually took on a body. It raises the possibility that spirits are more closely linked to the elves than what we believe. This might also explain the idea of elven immortality. Perhaps elves were naturally linked to the spirits and hence could live longer lives, as proven with Wynne, Zathrian, and even Flemeth. Despite the fact that this is just a theory, the lore in Dragon Age appears to explain itself through the secrets of the elven race. Lyrium infused bodies. Merely a theory until the arrival of the Trespasser DLC from Dragon Age Inquisition. When speaking with Cole, he says a number of things, but this phrase is where the possibility of Lyrium bodies becomes a reality. They made bodies from the earth, and the earth was afraid. It fought back, but they made it forget. Codex entries also explain a big war between the Elven with the Titans. Hail Mithal, educator and savior, she has struck down the pillars of the earth and rendered the Dements unto the people. Praise her name forever. The notion is that the Elves warred with the Titans for their power and created Lyrium-infused bodies for their slaves. The easiest indicator to see this being true is from the story of Fenris from Dragon Age 2 and the comic Blue Wraith. Fenris, also known as Leto, was a Tevinter Imperium slave whose master was known as Magister Denarius. Denarius was inspired to create a sarcophagus that absorbed lyrium into the skin by old elven writings and knowledge. In his research, he stumbled upon an ancient treatise that described a process of embedding lyrium beneath the skin. Fenris was the elf who had been placed into this sarcophagus. Fenris was then covered with lyrium-infused marks that gave him the abnormal ability to phase through solid objects and tethered into the Fade. Since this knowledge was known in the past, the Evaneers would have used lyrium to infuse with the flesh of their elven slaves to wage war against their adversaries, maybe even the Forgotten Ones. This is especially frightening to consider because red lyrium existed in Arlathan's ancient times as well, implying that red lyrium may have been weaponized too. 
Whatever the case, the Elves of Thetis are by far the most mysterious race of Thetis, and I hope we get to learn more about them in Dragon Age Dreadwolf. But with that, we are going to wrap up 5 things they never told you about elves. Which on this list was your favorite? Also, do you normally play as an elf in Dragon Age? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you don't comment, I will make the Dreadwolf enter into your dreams. I wish he was in my dreams. Anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Or as the elven say, Dareth Sharald.